Yeah, and just to give some credibility to this idea that they drank their way through these countries, uh, you know, we attend many conferences together, whether it's Montpelvin or API, which is the Association of Private Enterprise Educators, which is a free market academic conference. You know, Ben and Bob are always among the last to leave the bar. And, uh, you know, I don't drink much. And these guys just, it's amazing their capacity to drink. So, uh, and, and the book uh, documents that <laughs> geographically. Um, so you literally, you know, traveled around the world and uh, went to these uh, socialist and not so socialist countries and, and, and went to bars and experienced kind of day-to-day -day the way life is in these countries. Not, you know, I, I noticed that when you went to Cuba that you didn't go to the touristy, That's right. you know, uh, uh, high-end kind of resort hotels. You went to, to Cuban, real Cuban hotels. Yeah, yeah. We didn't want to, well, we weren't sandbagging it. We weren't like living in, in the streets, but, uh, but there's no point in going to uh, Cuba and, 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 and going and staying in the Hotel Nacional. I mean, the Hotel Nacional is a five-star international hotel that diplomats stay in. And, um, and I'm sh we didn't even bother to, to go over. Uh, it, it, I'm sure it's glorious. All the, everyone says it's nice. We stayed our first night in Havana. We stayed at the Hotel Carib, um, which um, is described as a three-star hotel. Um, and uh, well, let's just say Cuban three stars are different than, your, than American three stars. Uh, we, we did have uh, three of the four elevators didn't work. It was mold uh, all over the shower. We had water one of the two days we were there. That was nice. Um, it was it was literally one of the worst places I've ever stayed in. It's a government run hotel. And and, you know, this is no surprise to you or most of your your viewers or listeners. Um, you know, if you try to operate a hotel that shabbily in the United States, you'd be out of business in a week. Um, no one would stay there. But, you know, that, that's a government-run hotel. They're not going out of business. Uh, if, they don't, if they don't make ends meet, um, the government uh, will, will cover any losses. And it's a powerful disincentive to do a good job. Um, so, I mean, it was actually a better hotel than the other government hotel, which was uh, uh, another night. There, they, they were kind enough to give us soap, although it was the, the soap left over from the previous guests. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so it's um, so let's let's define the terms yeah. because you, you do this yeah. in the book and and so many I do debates all the time capitalism socialism debates with socialists and the one thing they never do is define what they're talking about because they want to they want to hide what the real meaning of it plus they want to take credit for Sweden which we'll get to in a minute so what when when you talk about socialism what is it you're talking about. Yeah, so we actually use Sweden as our, our exemplar there. And the title of that chapter, it's the first chapter, is Not Socialism. And um, one, of the, one of the tells, uh, in fact, we used, beer became kind of a running, not, it's not just that Ben and I like beer. Beer became kind of a running metaphor through the book for, for the entire economy. And, and the first tell that Sweden is not socialist is that the beer is good. Yeah. Uh, there's a picture of us uh, in drinking at Duval Cafe, drinking Belgian uh, Duval beer. Um, and it was good and cold. Now it was very, very expensive. And that's a tell that you're not in a free market country because that beer shouldn't be that expensive, but, it, but it's, it, that, bar, that bar we were drinking in was a private bar. There are no central planners deciding what Swedish companies produce and how they produce them. They're not allocating labor and capital and raw materials to businesses. There's no central plan. Volvo is a private firm. They sell their cars all over the world at, at you know, market prices. Um, so Sweden is not a socialist country the way we define it. We define it as, as collective, and that de facto means state, control of the means of production, that the state is going to make the decisions about what gets produced, how those things get produced, and, and ultimately even for whom, uh, who, how people consume them. And that's not the way the Swedish economy works. It's a market economy. Now, they nail you on tax day, as you know. Yep. Um, their taxes are 50% at least higher than the United States. And that's why that beer was so expensive. But that was good privately made capitalist beer uh, that was very highly taxed. And we want to distinguish sort of high tax welfare states from socialism. And, and a lot of people do confuse those things today on both the left and the right. Uh, friends of ours on, on what we sometimes call the right. I hate that term, but there it is. I do too. Uh, uh, but, you know, friends of ours will sometimes call Sweden socialist, and that's just not accurate. Yep. And then you have Bernie Sanders on the left today calling them socialist too. And, some people are just misinformed. 
and maybe we can talk about how some of the young people today are misinformed about what socialism is. But, but some people are also lying. I mean, Bernie Sanders, I, I think, is a liar. Liar. I mean, he knows what socialism is. I yep. mean, he, he went to the Soviet Union for his honeymoon. Also, who does that? But anyway, yeah. um, my wife would have murdered me. Hey, honey, we're going to the Soviet Union for our honeymoon. It takes real uh, dedication. Real dedication. You got to be a hard comrade to do that. But I mean, so Bernie knows what socialism is. He went there, he saw it up close and personal, and he liked it. Yep. So for him today to say, well, what I really mean is Denmark or Sweden is, is more than disingenuous. But leaving him aside, most young people today, when they say they want to be socialists like Sweden, it's not that they're lying cheats like Bernie. They're just, they, just, they just think that that socialism means high taxes and some more government spending. And we wanted to distinguish that in the book. And so we're talking about real socialism, the kind of socialism that was practiced in the Soviet Union and Mao's China that is currently practiced in North Korea, Cuba, and Venezuela. Yep. That's what we're talking about. You don't go for altruism and charity and do good and liberal and... No. And conservative. You might as well add it all. You don't like the conservatives either? No. Well, Not today's start... conservatives. All right. uh, I want to help people. I want to do good for other people. What's so bad about that? Nothing. If you do it by your own choice, and if it's not your primary aim in life, and if you don't regard it as a moral virtue, on those conditions, it's fine to help people if you want to. Why, isn't, why can't I think of it as a moral virtue? I mean, can't I take some vows for myself for doing all these good things? Because that would be cannibalism. Because that would mean that you preach altruism, which means not merely kindness, but self-sacrifice. It means that you place the welfare of others above your own. That you live for others, for the sake of helping them, and that justifies your life. That's immoral according to my morality. Uh, I don't understand why you have to be so harsh in your, def in your evaluation of those people. Why, why call it immoral? Why don't you just say, why, why don't you say it's a waste of time? Why, why pass judgment on me? Because look at the state of the world today. Yeah. And you cannot be harsh enough on those who created it. And those who created it are the philosophers of altruism. It's those who preach self-sacrifice, selflessness, self-abnegation, all the anti-self theories, which means anti-man. All those who demand man's sacrifice, they have succeeded, and yeah. look at the results in the world. That's a, that's a theory or a way of life or an, a philosophic idea which is, which is advanced by religions, that we should sacrifice for others. That's right. All right. I want to make sure I understand you, Miss Rand. Why is it so... I'm still not quite sure why you're so harsh on those who would sacrifice for other people. Because I look at them. Just look at them. Because they are... They don't hesitate to sacrifice whole nations. Uh, look at Russia. Communism is based on altruism. Look at Nazi Germany. The Nazis were more explicit than even the Russians in preaching self-sacrifice and altruism, and self-sacrifice for the state, for the folk, the people. Every dictatorship is based on altruism. Now, you can't fight it by merely saying it's a difference of opinion, it's a difference of life and death. Your, so your view is then, with, if we all became more comfortable which, with our natural uh, tendencies, that is to say, selfishness, there would be less horror, less war, less Hitler? There wouldn't be any. So with the more selfish we are, the more kind, the, the, the more tranquil and peaceful the world in which we live? And more benevolent toward other people, if we're rationally selfish. By that I mean a selfishness which can justify one's every action rationally, not the kind of whim worship, as I call it, which consists of just indulging your own desires and but, urges of the moment. And there is no innate natural idea, you know. There isn't, huh? No. Well, I have an innate, I have a lot of innate tendencies. You think they're innate. You know what I would say? <laughs> check your premises. Check my premises? Yeah. Check the basic ideas behind 
any feelings that you might feel at the moment and you'll see that your feeling comes from your premises, good or bad, but they help subconsciously, they will direct your feelings and you will think it's innate, right. but it isn't. How do you think the super chat? And I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourunbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your and, um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...